Hey you folks, everything new in the sun. Well, my hand has been forced a tiny bit as it relates to upgrading my Jobo. I'm just doing a backup on my new MacBook Pro, 13-inch MacBook Pro. And I've been having trouble using the backup that was from my iMac. It doesn't want to back up to the same <clears throat> to the same sparse bundle file or whatever on uh, on my neck gear store. For whatever reason, <clears throat> and I probably have to delete it, but it takes forever to delete stuff there. So, just to get a backup done so I'm not waiting, I'm going to do a backup to my Drobo. Because my Drobo is really a great uh, redundant system. You know, it spreads data across uh, multiple drives there. And uh, so if I have an absolute crash, I mean I have an SSD in my MacBook Pro. But if I have an absolute crash or the SSD dies then at least there will be a time machine backup on my Drobo that I can make use of. And of course in the Drobo you can lose a hard drive and uh, still have your data. So that's good. I mean you can even lose your Drobo in theory and just get another Drobo and plug the, the batteries into it and uh, you'll be good to go. Um, my batteries did. Let me replace that. Alright, so my SSD is about 172 gigs and I have only about 119 free. Let me go to capacity here and you can see the capacity. So I'm now in the orange state. I'm at 13% uh, space. It warned me at 15% saying, oh, you should replace a battery, uh, not battery, uh, a hard drive soon. Uh, replace a smaller one or add a, a larger one. And uh, so, yeah, there's the warning there. Yellow warning, Jobo is running low on protected space. Insert new hard drive. Now, I just did a video on why not to put new hard drives into your Drobo if you don't absolutely need it um, because it saves wear and tear on your new drive and just wait until one of the old drives dies. But it's at the point where um, in order to complete this backup of my main SSD, um, I'm going to need uh, more space. I've only got 119 and I've got a total of 177 gigs that I need to go ahead and back up. Um, so nine hours to go on that. The really cool thing about the Drobo, though, which makes it awesome, is that um, I don't have to shut it down. I don't even have to stop this backup in order to put a new drive into the Drobo. That's the apparent beauty of it. So we're going to test that out shortly. But I should just be able to pop a new drive in there. And uh, it will recalculate, and not, no access to data will ever stop. And isn't that uh, absolutely incredible? So let's see if I can pull the, uh, pull the drive here. I have it stashed away here in an electrostatic case. There's my new drive. It's a one terabyte C8 drive. Uh, I'm going to set this camera up and we'll uh, take a look at the Drobo. Alright, so let's just slide the MacBook to the side here. We'll... Here is the Drobo, front and center. And you see at the bottom we've got our orange light, which is not critical failure yet. Um, you can see it's also orange on the MacBook Pro. That just means, obviously, that um, space is getting low. It will get critical, I think, probably at 10%. It's probably going to get critical warning. But um, since i got to go to work soon, um, this is probably going to go to critical um, while I'm at work, while it's backing up. So let's go ahead and pop this off. And uh, we'll pull out the hard drive here. So again, I showed this in why not to add new hard drives to your Drobo. Um, but now I'm forced to, like I say, my hand is forced, um, I'm running out of space. So I did get this brand new 1 terabyte Seagate 7200 RPM. This is a full 3.5 inch drive. Uh, the Drobo takes 3.5 inch and it will take the uh, 2.5 inch. It's just hard to get them out or, or in for that matter. Um, it's just a plain old SATA connection. So any, any SATA, SATA drive, SATA, whatever you want to call it, uh, will fit in there. So I'm going to pop this guy in. So in the top here, I've got a 500 gig 3.5 inch. I've got a one terabyte here. And behind this door is actually a 2.5 inch uh, 500 gig uh, drive. So of course, uh, the drive that is missing is down here. Now if I had, had these all filled up, then what it would do is it would um, mark out which drive uh, should be replaced. So it will mark out the smallest drive, which you then need to upgrade. So at this point, um, I don't have to actually upgrade an existing drive. I've still got one space left. So I'm just gonna let's put this in real time. See how it does and we can see how it reacts over there on the MacBook Pro. 
So uh, it's really cool because, like I say, normally with RAID machines, you need to shut the units down, uh, plug in the new hard drive, reconfigure it, etc. But with this Drobo unit, the beauty of this thing is that you can just uh, plug and play. I, c I could even pop out a drive right now if I wanted to, and the data would still be accessible. Now, isn't that incredible that I could just pop out a drive like that. I don't want to do that because it'll start trying to reconfigure data um, to, to preserve your data. So I'm not going to even try that. Um, and lots of people have done it on YouTube so you can watch them doing it. But I'm just going to try and hot swap, a, hot swap in a new one terabyte drive. And uh, once this thing is filled up, I think this will probably give me about maybe 700 gigs. So we'll see. So I'm at uh, total space is... What is my total space? Total space is 900 gigs. Uh, let's see, 900 gigabytes on the bottom there. So let's see what this bumps up my usable space to. My, so my current uh, free space is 119. So we're going to go ahead and plug this guy in here. And gently, because these are uh, moving drives, so you got to be careful. You don't want to bump this thing. And it should just go in. Nice and s slowly. I'm trying to hold it down to the base without bumping the unit too much. And there we go. Clicked in. Beautiful. Now we should see this flash. And we should see some stuff happening. Now it's going to spin this up. So it's thinking about it. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's, it's spinning it up. Uh, we should see some stuff happen. So th this light over here is going to go green hopefully when it figures it out and we should see this over here get some more space on it. Let's move this over here so we can see better. <clears throat> so 118 gigs, it's, it's basically formatting that drive right now. While, all while it is actually backing up, uh, Time Machine is going right now, backing up to the Drobo unit. So all at the same time, which is, I, I don't know, it's just a cool technology that it will do it all at the same time. Alright, well I'm back. This has been sitting for a while. For whatever reason, it is not recognizing the new drive that I got in there. And maybe that's why I got it broken, used for parts. Um, I, I don't recall what the actual issue described was. But it may be that this bottom port isn't working properly. Not recognizing the drive. So I'm going to do something unthinkable. Uh, well, I'll pop this drive out. <coughs> so I, don't, I don't think it's doing it. I mean, it's been there for 10-15 minutes. It should have shown something up here. I'm going to pop this out here. If I can. There we go. And I'm actually going to take this guy out. It doesn't, uh, boy, you gotta kinda hold the button back because it kind of bumps on the uh, side there. So, this is warm. It was spun up, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, registering. I'm actually gonna pop up the 2.5 inch drive while it's running. It's, uh, you know, it's probably not recommended to do this, even though it does say it's capable of doing it. I'm gonna pop this guy out, and we should immediately see error. So, it's recalculating now, and it's gonna say, oh, there's something wrong. See if it uh, shows up there. And now I'm totally full. Zero space left. There's the there's the red mark there. Should show up there. Any time now. So this is this was at the 2.5 inch. I'm gonna, this is a 500 gig drive. So I'm just going to replace that. I I, I kind of want to take that out anyways. And if I've only got three working drives, then such as it is. So, I'm waiting for this interface to refresh here and give me some sort of a massive warning. I'm not sure what it's... Oh, there we go, okay. Got to get my alerts there. Massive warning, use 100% space. Add a drive, okay, I will add a drive. So I don't know what's up with the bottom one, but let's set the camera up here and install the new drive. where the 2.5 inch was. Let's see if it recognizes this one in this slot. There we 
There we go. Okay, that's definitely spinning up. I can hear it spinning up. <clears throat> so let's not see. Okay. Now it sees it. N new, new drive added. Perfect. So now we should see this update and recognize the one terabyte. Now, of course, over here you can see that it's flashing, so it's trying to figure it out. It's basically formatting the drive. It should have done that when I put it in the bottom. Because it should have it should have recognized the new drive. Alright, so there I've got my extra terabyte there. And uh, now it is uh, doing its drive protection stuff. All the while, all the while this is still going here. You can see it's slowly counting up there, backing up. So it never it interrupted the data access, which is very, very cool. Never interrupted that at all. I pop the drive out, pop the drive in. <clears throat> so now this process actually takes uh, many hours. I think it ends up calculating how many minutes or hours it figures it'll take, uh, but it'll take quite a bit. And I can hear that. I can hear the hard drives crunching our way there. But it shows <clears throat> now I've got free space, just over 500 gigs free space. So let's go to capacity here. And we can see it flashing because it's data recovery is still in progress. Um, but now we have a total of 1.33 terabytes and 569 gigs uh, free space. Very, very cool. Back to the status. So, like I say, it all shows there. And it does show the extra drive. So, I just, I don't know, I'm, I think I'm going to let this finish. 16 hours it says to complete. So, <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't take that long, but anyways, um, data backup is in progress. Um, I may or may not try and put this 2.5 inch back in. Now I don't need it. Um, now I can probably use this for other projects. Um, but I may set this aside and just keep it um, should any of the other drives fail. So should the other 500 gig fail, for example, then this would be a perfect uh, one to slide in there. And it's always good to have an extra drive sitting there. Uh, not in use if possible, like I, like as per my other video, um, because if you come to an emergency, you need to pop a drive in there for data protection, and uh, you don't have a drive sitting around, well, you uh, risk losing more data. So having something sitting there, even if it's a smaller drive, um, will help. And then probably later today, I'll actually try putting this in the bottom slot and see even if it recognizes it. There's something up with the bottom slot, apparently, and maybe that was the whole issue uh, with this thing in the first place so just as well you know if the top three slots work um, then that's totally fine for me and that's totally doing doing what I need it to anyways I don't have huge uh, data requirements um, so I mean that 500 gigs will last me uh, you know for the next year for sure I just I, I don't use it up too fast so I'll let this go and I'll update you guys uh, a little bit later Well, here we are at, well, it's been going since this morning. It started out saying 26 hours when I was still backing up the MacBook Pro. Now it's down to 8 hours, apparently. So I imagine this will be done probably in the next 4 hours, realistically. I think those numbers are off. But, just as a note, this is the, um, this is the real critical time. If you're using a Drobo as a backup machine and a drive fails, uh, there's only one disk redundancy here. I can only afford to lose one disk. Um, if, if two disks go, your data's gone. So if you're relying on this as a backup, um, that may be fine because you've got your original copy on your computer. But if you only have one copy on your Drobo and you're expecting this to be redundant enough, it may not be. Because like I say, when a drive fails, that's fine. Now it's now it's in recovery mode. It's um, it's recovering all the data and it's moving it across, spanning it across um, the new data, the uh, the new uh, <coughs> hard drive. But this is the most intensive time because now you're putting extra strain on your two other hard drives, while it transfers all the data and spreads it all out again. This means that at this most critical time, just after you've lost a hard drive, now you're putting extra strain on your other older hard drives while it tries to recopy the data across and resynchronize everything. So if something goes wrong now in the, you know, it will have been 
uh, 8, 10, 12, 15 hours by the time it's done synchronizing, if you lose another drive within then, you've lost your data. So you should never have, you should never um, trust the Drobo as your main data system and your backup system just because um, it's somewhat redundant. It is, but because it takes so long to transfer the data to, re to uh, restore the protection, um, that means you could lose uh, more data if, if we lose another drive here in the eight, you know, eight to 15 hours that it takes to actually copy the data across. So something to be aware of. This is why you should always have another a tertiary drive uh, backup, uh, you know, a USB backup drive. It doesn't have to be a, a multiple disk system, an array of any sort. It can be a single hard drive um, as a third backup. So you've got your first copy of data on your computer. You've got your second copy of data on your Drobo and it works as time machine backup, etc. And this works pretty good. Most of you probably never have uh, data loss with it. But if during this time it fails and you only have one copy of data on your Drobo and you're hoping that the redundancy of the Drobo saves you, that may not save you if you have another hard drive crash or failure for whatever reason. That's why you should always have, like I say, a tertiary, uh, another a USB uh, backpack, you know, backup drive. Only has to be a single drive, you know, a couple of terabytes. Back up your Drobo onto that USB drive. And then you're sure you have three copies of data at all times. And worst case scenario, um, you know, if you were using the Drobo as, as uh, your main data drive and you're hoping that the redundancy helps, then you would have a, at least a second copy of the data on on the USB drive um, that you backed up off your Drobo. And in this case, um, I have all my data on my computer and uh, a second copy on the Drobo. And the the whole system is also backed up to my Netgear Stora. So anyways, uh, just a little explanation here. I'll come back when this is done and uh, we'll try and figure out how long this actually took. All right, the summit to the Drobo drive install video is that we are good, it did end up taking Oh, a good 16 hours. It took quite a long time. It was obviously slowed down uh, because I was doing the backup when I started. But now I've got uh, two terabyte drives, two one terabyte drives in there, and a 500. You can see the 1.33, which I showed before, and here's the nice green capacity chart. So I've had I have 400 gigs go. That 400 gigs will last me for the rest of the year, no problem, I would think. I think I have decided to continue to back up my MacBook Pro to the Drobo and then I'll back up the Drobo to uh, a third you know a USB or something maybe my Netgear story even I'm not sure yet but it makes sense because it's good expandable uh, good expandable system it makes sense that I you know use that to back up to initially and then I can get um, a larger USB device to uh, like I say back this up but yeah this is all good to go I did try putting a drive in the bottom here. I got my 2.5 inch 500 gig. It's not seeing it though, so there's definitely something wrong with this bay. And I guess that's, I guess that's what the guy meant when he, when he sold it to used not working or whatever for parts, because um, he probably had four drives in here and this one wasn't working and he needed it, needed four drives, so he just sold it. So I got a super good deal on it. I'll investigate it um, eventually, but honestly, for now, I mean, if I only have three drives, that's that's plenty for me. I mean, like I said, I have the 500 gig there, so when I run out of space, I'll put a terabyte in there. Actually, by that time, I'll probably put a, a two terabyte in there. Because two terabyte drives are about 100 bucks. You know, it's not much more expensive than a one terabyte, to be honest, these days. And um, if I can, you know, expand them all to two terabyte drives, even just that, uh, you know, I should be able to go to three terabyte or four terabyte drives each. But even just uh, all two terabyte drives, I would have loads of space. I just... I don't know, I'd probably put on 500 gigs uh, a year uh, of uh, videos and, and photos and such. So, I mean, it's not growing at a huge rate. Um, <clears throat> we'll see if I use up that 400 gigs this year. So, All right, that's enough rambling. Um, so it's, it's working. Uh, it's a little scary that it takes so long to uh, synchronize the data. Um, but it is what it is, and it seems to have survived. And so uh, we're ready for the next drive failure. So I'll keep you posted and we'll see how that goes. So thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Okay.